In a business where we're always chasing more, more success, more business, more money, more work, why would you ever want to lose out on quotes? What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And on today's Shop Talk, we're gonna dive into exactly that question. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. So today on Shop Talk, we're gonna go a little bit against the grain. Um, I was browsing the Practical Machinist forums, which as I often say, if you have not checked out, is a fantastic resource. But I was on the Shop Management and Ownership Issues subform, which is where you know the guys who own and run shops or manage shops come on. And there's a lot of great information and a lot of great questions asked there about starting a shop, running a shop, um, a lot of the concerns that go into running or managing a shop. And a guy was on there talking about his shop. Um, the whole topic of his thread wasn't that pertinent to share with the and to share with the class, I guess. But there was one part that I picked out that I found very, very interesting. This guy came on. He was talking about his business was experiencing some struggles. You know, as I'm sure a lot of us are at certain points in our business, especially during you know the pandemic and all that fun stuff. But he was talking about you know some of the problems he was having and some of the struggles he was facing. And at one point he said, and I'll pull it out here, he was winning something like 90% of the work he was quoting on. And he phrased it in a way that was like, you know, I don't know why I'm having trouble paying the bills or making the payroll. I'm winning 90% of the work that I'm quoting on. If you don't know a lot about the business or maybe you're not thinking in a certain way, this sounds awesome. 90%, you're winning 90%. That's a ton of work. You know, 90% of two is still, you know, one point, whatever. But, you know, assuming he's getting a lot of quotes uh, in the coming in the door, if he's winning 90%, that's a great position to be in, right? For those of you who don't know or maybe aren't familiar with quoting, the system when it comes to quoting runs like this. When a company out there wants to get work done, the purchasing agent or the owner or whoever handles that on their end will send out an RFQ or a request for quote. The person on the machining end will get that quote, you know, either that's a person who works solely in quoting, that could be a business owner, that could be a supervisor, whoever handles that at the business, will get that request for quote. And the request for quote usually has, you know, drawings, it'll have specs, uh, material call outs, you know, their desired turnaround time. It's all the information on the work they want done in a package. And so it's the responsibility of the person who receives that to try to provide a quote. So what the person on the receiving end will usually do is go through and, you know, here's the thing guys, quoting is a bit of a dark art. Um, I think every company does it a little bit differently. I think there are softwares out there that purport to be able to quote work for you, but everybody does it a little differently. You know, whether that's the rate per hour they put on a job, whether that's how they handle material uh, as part of their quote, but they'll go through and they'll basically try to figure out, you know, between their setup, their tooling, their material, um, their machine time, everything that goes into that price and offer a price on the work, you know, usually per part or as a lot price. The other thing they'll put in there that is the other very important uh, part of quoting is their expected turnaround time. So let's say I get an RFQ, I look at it, I say, okay, it's going to be $26 per part for this many parts. And you're looking at three to four week turnaround. So I send that off, that's my quote. I send that back to the purchaser that sent me the RFQ. The purchaser usually doesn't send out an RFQ to only one company. Um, you know, unless you have a very, very good relationship with that purchasing agent, usually they're gonna send it out to a bunch of companies. So they're gonna get back their quote from company A, company B, company C, company D. And they now need to make a ruling. So they're gonna say, all right, company A has price here, but they can turn it around in two weeks. Company B has price here, but they can turn it around in a week. Company price, uh, company C has price here, but they're gonna be six weeks turnaround. So they go and they take all these things into consideration and try to make a decision. It's a very, very difficult skill to master to be able to get the right price point, the right turnaround to consistently get work in the door. Um, it's very easy to shoot yourself in the foot and quote too high or too long a uh, delivery time. And it's also very easy to get yourself in trouble by quoting way too low 
and too short a delivery time and all of a sudden you're breaking expectations or you're losing money. So to get back to the story at hand, this guy said, like I said, he's winning something like 90% of the quotes that he's quoting out on. And just so you guys know, 90% win rate is an abnormally high number. That is ridiculously high. Um, that means in every nine and 10 jobs he's quoting on, he's getting. And outside of having a very, very good working relationship with a company, it's very rare that you're gonna get 90% of the work you quote on. It means that because of, if he's getting 90%, he's one of three things. So either one, he is the cheapest option available and nobody even comes close to him on price, so he's winning on price. The second option is that he's the fastest option available or he has the best quality, one of those two things. So either he can turn around faster than people or he's got better work than other people and he's competing on that merit. Or three, he has a deep, deep, deep relationship, you know, spanning 20 years with a couple purchasing agents and they pretty much only shop it out to him. And you know, in a perfect world, guys, that is a fantastic scenario to be in. If you have a very, very deep relationship with your purchasing agents and they pretty much just send work to you. They don't even shop it. The fact that he's on a discussion on the Practical Machinist forums and he's talking about his business struggles with in particular cash flow, kind of lets me know that it's probably not the third option. He probably just doesn't have a wicked relationship with these uh, purchasing agents and they're just throwing money at him. It's probably not that, otherwise he has some other huge issues at his company. So if he's winning all this work, what gives? Why is he having cash flow issues? Um, you know, I, I get it guys. We are all very driven to win every RFQ that comes across our desk. Um, especially, you know, with the slowdown, with the pandemic, with the struggles everybody's having with supply chain issues. A lot of us have been in a spot that anytime work comes across our desk, you know, it's like Gollum trying to get the ring. Give me the work. I need the work. I need to pay my guys. And we have that drive to hyper focus and just get the work in the door by any means necessary. And guys, in some scenarios, that's going to be required. Um, you know, it's a matter of paying your guys or not paying your guys or closing your company or not closing your company. Those scenarios come up. Um, that said, the important point to note here is I've kind of hidden a little part of this guy's story in order to prove this point or to kind of discuss it. But right after this guy said, I'm winning 90% of my work, he said in the next sentence, I should be winning something like 70% of the work I quote on. It doesn't seem to make any sense, right? Why would the guy want to lose more quotes? Why would he want to have a lower win rate? To someone, you know, not exceptionally familiar with this end of the business, this sounds counterproductive. Um, you know, as they used to say, quantity is a quality all itself, right? Get everything you can. And this guy right away said, you know, I should be getting something like 70% of the work I quote on. So why would he want to lose bids for work? The fact is guys, if you are winning something like 90% of the work you quote on or 95 or even 85, the point is that your work that you're quoting out, you're probably not competitive. When we think of pricing being not competitive, usually we think that that means we're quoting $100 on a part that every other shop could do for 50. The inverse of that is true. There are scenarios where you could be quoting work that should be done for $100 a part out for $50. And that's not competitive either because now you are so far and away a better choice to that purchasing agent that they, they'd be stupid not to choose you. The fact is, if everybody else is quoting at $100 and you're quoting 50, there's probably a reason for it. The negative to that is exactly what this guy is seeing. Um, it's very, very possible to get yourself in a scenario that you have more work than you know what to do with and still be struggling to make payroll. If you're winning 90% of your quotes outside of any real advantage, you know, you're giving a kickback to the purchasing agent or something, it means that you are probably cheaper or, yeah, you're probably cheaper than 90% of the other companies out there. And there's a reason for that. It's because that work's not profitable at the price you're quoting it at. As I said before, guys, quoting is a very difficult thing to nail down. Um, I know a lot of good companies that do exceptionally good work that have closed over the years, and I would speculate that a big part of that is that they were not very good at quoting. Um, they could do really good work, 
but they couldn't quote work out at a price that made sense or they couldn't quote work out at a timeline that made sense. So you know, they're robbing Peter to pay Paul. They're always throwing work in in a rush and pushing other stuff off. And then all of a sudden they get in a scenario where other companies aren't going to them anymore because they can't get their work done reliably anymore. Um, the reason this guy said a 70% win rate is important and I agree with him is that if you're winning something like 70% of your quotes, that means you're probably competing on something outside of price. Um, if you're winning 70% of your quotes, that means you're losing 30. That 30 is probably knocking off that 30% of bottom feeder customers that are really only gonna be a drain on you. Um, it's knocking off that 30% of customers that, you know, as we've talked about in previous videos, just aren't gonna be good customers. You know, the ones that you're gonna be chasing down at 30, 60, 90 days to get payment for. Um, you really don't want, want every customer that's out there that asks you to do work. At the end of the day, some just aren't good. So if you're winning 70%, that means first of all, you're probably not competing on a basis of price and B, you're probably losing out on the ones you don't really want to win anyway. Remember, if you were in a scenario and you know, going back to the whole, you know, give me work, give me work, I have no work, I need work. If you have no work, you are losing X amount of dollars a day to stay open. If you have bad work, you could be losing two or three times that amount because now you are paying more guys, you're breaking tooling, uh, you're paying for the material. You can be in a position with bad work to lose more money than no work. So it's very important to keep that in mind. Um, in any case, guys, I think this 70% win rate is something that I personally go towards as well. When I'm working and sending out quotes, you know, I, I use a system where I can see all the quotes I went out. If I go through there and I see a PO, you know, on a block on every single one of those quotes for the last two months or something, that's time to give my head a scratch. Cause that means, you know, we, we don't have a lens in this business into what other companies are doing. And that kind of response is pretty much the only kind of lens I can get in a lot of cases into what other companies are doing. If I see all those POs, that means, guess what? I'm probably too cheap, or I'm probably not giving realistic timelines, you know, outside of if it's one customer that constantly orders, you know, that's a different scenario. But if it's new work and I'm constantly winning, it's always worth, you know, instead of just celebrating, going and looking and saying, why am I winning everything all of a sudden? Is it because everybody else is busy? That's a scenario. Or is it because I'm too cheap and I'm gonna get myself in trouble? You know, it's, uh, it's one of those scenarios, guys, where we've talked about it before that, you know, trying to keep your pricing going up as other people go up is a lot better than being cheaper than everybody for a long time and then jacking your price and all your customers say, what are we doing here, right? So using that win rate as kind of a barometer as to how you are doing on your quoting will be essential for your success as a machining business. In any case, guys, I thought this was an interesting conversation. I hope you guys found it to be the same. I would like to know some of your stories below, some of your quoting tips. You know, do you try to aim for a lose rate? Do you try to aim for a certain win rate? Or do you kind of just let other people think about this? You know, some companies do that. They just take what they can get and do a post-mortem after. But I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. As always, to make sure you never miss, miss a video, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.